Which Baltimore Ravens wide receiver will have the most yards this year? With the Ravens wide receiver room being so crowded and with the addition of Sean Wade, could Miles Boykin or even Tavon Young find themselves being traded? Why can't these experts and analysts see how much of a dangerous offense the Ravens are building? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. And you know just what I mean. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask any NFL question you want to about any NFL team, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of this, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. We got some really good questions. Without further ado, let's do it. First question came from my boy Rodell. He said, my guy, as the rumors continue to heat up, my stance on the situation does too. This is more of a rant slash comment, but let's go get him. All right, so before we get into it, if he is talking about Julio Jones, I'm recording this on May 31st, so Julio Jones hasn't been traded yet, but we'll see what he has to say. Anyway, how many times have the Ravens went and got great top-notch defenders in their prime? How many times have they missed on top offensive players in their prime? Man, go get Julio. If I'm being honest, I'm happy with what EDC delivered on offense so far. To me, his approach is more aggressive on that side than Ozzy's was. With that said, I like sending Hollywood, Sammy, and Bateman out oh, oh, out there day one. Okay, oh boy, because when, when you said, because in my mind, I was thinking about a trade scenario with Julio Jones, and usually when somebody's talking about acquiring a player via trade and they use the word sending, that means they're ready to ship somebody out. And when you said, I like sending Hollywood, Sammy, and Bateman, I was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. But let's continue. Uh, I like sending uh, Hollywood, Sammy, and Bateman out there on day one, but don't love it simply because of what's about to happen. Julio Jones is about to be moved for next to nothing. He's about to take a franchise from wherever they currently stand to, at minimum, a top five offense. We have to make this move. His cap hit this year is significant, but after this year, he's a steal. I'm not sure we can keep Hollywood and Andrews, but if we have Julio for the next three years, I'm letting Hollywood walk and running with Julio, Bateman, Wallace, and Andrews at worst. This is a no-brainer for me. Players I'm willing to lose for him are De Devin Duvernay, Boykin on offense, or Tay-Tay a big baby on defense. You want to go to the AFC Championship? You want to beat Kansas City? It starts with this move. All right, so uh, my guy Rodell is all for uh, the Ravens acquiring one Julio Jones. Uh, I am as well. Not at the expense of a Hollywood Brown, though. Uh, he would make Hollywood Brown that much better. He would open up things for Hollywood Brown. And with Lamar Jackson, I just, I, I want him to be like, like, I, I would love for it to be a problem. Like, I know a lot of people even say it right now, like, man, Ravens got a lot of receivers right now. But I would love for it to be an even bigger and an even better problem. Oh, man, Ravens got so many receivers. Wow. And the quality of the receivers would be top notch, too. So that's what I would really appreciate about that whole thing. Um, Julio Jones would just make the room that much better. Make everybody in the room that much better. And he would make Lamar Jackson's worst receiver that much better. So I'm for Julio, but not trading away Hollywood. Uh, but there's some other stuff that you could work at. But let me back up a little bit. With Julio Jones, in my opinion, or my thoughts, whatever, if the Ravens were to acquire Julio Jones and they gave away a player, I don't think it would be anybody on their second deal. I don't. Because the Falcons, now, while the cap is capped, the Falcons, they, they, they ain't know how to manage. They don't know how to manage. Like, it's teams that know that the cap is cap. They know that the cap is cap. But they, they're smart about it. Falcons, I'm not sure exactly what went wrong. I'm not sure. But with, with, they mismanaged something in, in there. And now Julio, they got to get him on up, up, up out of there. Um, but I don't see them bringing on somebody who's on their second deal, um, on that second contract, because that would mean they would be making uh, significantly more money. I don't see them bringing them on while they're trying to unload Julio because they ain't know how to manage the capless cap. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I think it would have to be somebody on a rookie deal. It would have to be because they could possibly get a major impact uh, on the team. 
uh, with minimal impact on a salary cap. So maybe by the time y'all see this, Julio will probably be moved. If not, hey, he'll be moved someday. Next question came from my boy Wavy King. He said, yo, engraving, it's the youngin' again. Now, but I hope you and your family doing well. Oh, yeah, we doing good, man. He said, my first question is, who will get the most yards in our receiving group? Hollywood has done it the last two years, but with Bateman here, now maybe he'll dethrone Hollywood. I don't think so yet. I don't. But anyway, let me finish the question. Also, do you think there's still a possibility that the Ravens will get Justin Houston? Again, maybe by the time you see this video, maybe they will have him already. Or maybe not. Um, but back to the receiver question, who will get the most yards? If our receivers are who our receivers are right here, right now, I'm still going Hollywood. I'm going Hollywood. Uh, I'll go Hollywood one, uh, two. I will go Bateman. Uh, and in a close three, I'll go Watkins. Um, and, and I just think with Bateman, because the Ravens are banking on Bateman for the here, now, and for the future, too. Sammy Watkins is just the here and the now. So he's going to get his for sure. Um, but... I think Bateman, he could find himself start to be more incorporated uh, as the season continues. Um, so I'm going Hollywood 1, Bateman 2, and Sammy Watkins 3. Uh, now his third question. Uh, I haven't heard much on, oh, that's still part of the second question. I haven't heard much on Justin Houston lately, but his wisdom and experience could really help Adafi away and Dalen Hayes. And he'll be cheap too. Thanks for answering the questions and thanks for the videos keeping me updated with Ravens news. Appreciate you and keep up the good work. And I'm out. Appreciate it, man. So, yeah, with Justin Houston, every day, he gets cheaper and cheaper. Cheaper and cheaper. So, if the Ravens are really interested in him, maybe something might get to shaking. If not, okay. Next question came from Wright. He said, Hey, Graven, love the channel. Appreciate it. He said, My question is, do you think Hollywood changed up his catching style? Because in the videos of Lamar and Hollywood, he is catching with his hands and not his body. So, do you think he changed his style? And what impact will it have on his game? I, I don't think I, I can't say he changed his style just because we saw a 15 second video of him and Lamar Jackson th throwing to each other or Lamar Jackson throwing to him and him catching passes from him. I, I can't judge how his season is going to go or how he's going to catch the ball based off of that. Now, I would hope uh, he's catching with his hands because um, I think the biggest thing with Hollywood, I think with the, one of the problems with the drops with Hollywood last year uh, was it just seemed like simple concentration catches. That's what it seemed like to me. It seemed like it was just uh, concentration drop. Sometimes he would uh, try to catch with his body, though. Um, but I think it was like concentration drop. It seemed like sometimes he was looking to make that yak play or make the play after the ball before he had the ball. So it seemed like he might have been turning up field a little bit early. Um, but hopefully that's what it is. But I just think you can't really judge from watching those quick videos that the Ravens put up on the highlights. Next question came from my boy Schlubs. Oh, okay. I guess he just needed some information. He said, Engraving, hope all is well with you and the fam. First of all, did you get Mookie yet? No, we did not get Mookie yet. And, and for those of y'all that listen to the podcast, y'all know Carter, he, he wants a dog. He wants a dog. Uh, he wants a small dog, though. Me, I want a big dog. My wife was like, oh, just get two. No. But anyway, y'all can listen to the podcast for the rest on that. Uh, but he said, now to my real question, what's up with the jersey situation? What do players have to buy? I'm so confused. Keep up the great work. So uh, with the jerseys, if they want to if you want to change your number, you have to buy up all the inventory uh, of your current jersey that's out there. Uh, and it's usually about like one hundred fifty thousand, one hundred forty thousand, one hundred seventy thousand. I forgot exactly what it is, but you have to buy up all that inventory and then you can change your jersey number. I mean, it's just the NFL's way of making even more money. Because uh, you could change your number, uh, but then the NFL might be like, oh, man, we got all these jerseys out there. People still going to buy them. People, people still going to buy the old jerseys. They definitely going to buy the new jerseys, but they're going to buy the old jerseys too. Uh, but NFL, it's, it's their way of just recouping some money. I think that's their way of trying to really make up for, for last year. For Even though they made a lot of money, uh, they could have made even more. So they're trying to like, oh, you know what? Let's charge these players. Do they want to change their jerseys? Let's charge these boys, man. Because you notice next year they won't be charged. Next year they won't be charged. If, if they were to change their jersey number next year, there will be no, no, no fee at all. No penalty, no fee, no nothing. But this year, in the recoup year, they got to get it all back. But that's it. That's all they got to do, and they can change it. Next question came from my boy Stephen Y. He said, Hey, Graven, hope everything is great. Oh, everything's really good. Long time watcher, first time question asker here. Uh, after this crowded wide receiver room and the addition of Sean Wade, do you think we could trade either Miles Boykin or Tavon Young, or maybe both, to like the Chargers for a second round pick? Thanks for taking the time to read and respond. Mm. 
It's a tough question, uh, but really anything is possible. Anything is possible. Uh, the receiver room is crowded enough as is, uh, and we'll see if the Ravens end up adding Julio Jones. We'll see. I ain't the biggest. I ain't got the most confidence in the world in him, in them doing that. But um, even if they don't add a Julio Jones, the receiver room is crowded. So everybody's not going to be able to stick around. Everybody's not going to make the team, unfortunately. It just That's the nature of the business. Uh, so with Miles Boykin, I think it's a possibility, but I don't. I don't think with the receiver room that we have now, I don't really think Miles Boykin would be the odd man out. Uh, and as far as Tay Tay, now Tay Tay, that's one that is like because I'm even though he got his uh his contract reconstructed, I, I do not think that keeps him safe all the way. The reason I say that is because of the history. Because of the history, Ravens, unfortunately, it's a it's a business. It's a what have you done for me lately business. Um, it is a numbers game. Eric DaCosta has shown that he can be cutthroat um, and that he is not afraid to separate family from business. And he may love you as a person. He may love you as a player. But when it comes down to business, it's business. So, unfortunately, with Tavon Young, the Ravens know what life is like without Tay-Tay. They know what a season is like without having Tay-Tay. And they know what they can do. They know their limitations. They know what, and, and they got somebody in Sean Wade who specializes in the slot. They got that. And he's a fifth-round pick. So, Tavon Young is on his second contract. So there's a big difference when it comes to the salary. Now, I'm not sure what the dead money would be with if they were to trade a Tavon Young away, but you got to think that it's a big possibility. You got to think it's a huge possibility because of, again, the history and the fact that they have, and, and, and of course, Marlon Humphrey too. They, could, they always kick Marlon on the inside. So... It's, it's a possibility. I definitely think it is. Next question came from Crystal S. She said, hello, how are you and the family? Oh, we're good. We're really good. I hope yours is even better. She said, I just have a comment about the draft. It takes getting embarrassed to see what the Ravens need. Mm, I, um, <laughs> I can't say that, but like when you think about it, why do they get embarrassed? Well, they get embarrassed in different situations because they're missing something that they need. Um, and we, we see it, they see it, and it becomes evident that, oh, wait a minute, these guys are getting embarrassed because they don't have enough of this or they don't have better these or whatnot. So I, that's, that's what it is to me. I mean, and, I mean, you can say that about any team. Look at the Chiefs. The Chiefs, their offensive line was patchwork. It was rough. Everybody was beat up. And what happened to them in the, in the Super Bowl? They got embarrassed. They got embarrassed because they needed offensive linemen and they needed healthy offensive linemen. They went out and got Orlando Brown Jr. They got Creed Humphrey. So they upgraded their offensive line. So, I mean, I, I feel like you can, you can say that pretty much about any team. Um, she said Rashad Bateman is a good pick for Lamar. I agree. Get him that nice possession receiver with some good speed too now. Red zone guy, third down. Like, yeah, it's, yeah I think it was a really good pick. Uh, also... I think they should have paid Lamar Jackson way before these drafts. God bless you and your family. Appreciate it, Crystal. Um, no, I mean, with Lamar Jackson, even if they paid him now, it wouldn't kick in until, because they picked up the fifth-year option. Uh, so that's next season. That's not even this season. It wouldn't kick in until 2023 anyway, because he was signed a three-, four-, five-year extension um, but the money wouldn't hit until after the fifth year. So they I'm sure they're working on it. They probably already got something agreed to. But with Lamar Jackson, they don't they don't need to pay him now. They can, uh, but they don't they don't need to. It's, it's not like it's a rush. Now, every game, every season that goes by, that contract is gonna go up. His number's gonna go up. And but with Lamar Jackson, and one thing about it. Uh, the salary cap is getting ready to go back up too. Like even next season, it's going to go from where it is now, it's going to go up by like 20 mil, something like that. It's going to go up by a significant number because they already got what the, the, the minimal amount of the salary cap is going to be. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's going to allow the Ravens to have more money, but it allows everybody else in the NFL to have more money too. 
So, no, nah, they, they, they in, are in no rush to pay Lamar Jackson. Um, but that clock is ticking. Next question came from Gray Ice. He said, Hey, Graven, love the content this offseason. Keep up the great work. Appreciate it. And, yeah, we are getting into the... Uh, the who? How do you explain it? We are getting into the off season of the off season. It's coming up real soon, so y'all stay tuned. Anyway, he said. With that being said, I would love to hear your opinion on the ideal backup for Lamar Jackson. With his aggressive play style and recent O line troubles, would it be appropriate for the Ravens to find a legit backup who could actually compete with Lamar Jackson, or would McSorley and Huntley be enough? I think the guys that we got uh, would be fine um, because it would. They're not plug and play guys, cause they're they're not Lamar Jackson. We we know that, um, but with Trace McSorley and uh, Tyler Huntley, they're guys that uh, they 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 go feeling they go feeling pretty good. Um, I'm I'm fine with with them being the uh, the backup quarterbacks, or if they ends up just being a backup quarterback, and that's it. Uh, I I would be fine with it being them. Um, familiar with the system already, familiar with the coaching staff, the players and everything. Um, I, I think the biggest thing that they would need, I mean, which we would hope that they wouldn't get, uh, unless it was like in the fourth quarter, some blowouts, and then that would be fine. But the biggest thing that they would need would be repetition. Repetition and reps. I mean, it's all the same stuff, but that's all they would need. That's what they would need in my eyes to be even better backup quarterbacks. But the only way that they get that is is if Lamar is not playing. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we're finding what we got at backup quarterback. Next question came from my boy, Sean. Shout out to my guy, man. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. I haven't chimed in for a while, but I have a question for you. Lately, I've been getting frustrated with all the commentators picking the Cleveland Browns as a team to beat in the AFC North on paper. Did we not just see the Ravens draft the best route runner available in this draft and also two picks that would have been first rounders last year if it wasn't for injury uh, and adversity, that being Tylen Wallace and Sean Wade? Hmm, that's a good point. Uh, Sean Wade is clearly going to win the slot position, and all Tylen Wallace did his whole career was get open and make tough catches inside and outside the numbers. Ooh, I like that. And both would have been first-round picks last season if Tylen Wallace didn't get injured and Sean Wade didn't suffer so much off-the-field adversity as well as position change. Uh, both players were projected first-round picks, so in reality, the Ravens drafted four first-round talents. Uh, in this draft I understand as well as I have been telling you that Boykin and Prochet are on the hot seat that e and that EDC realized that he cannot find dogs at the wide receiver skill position late in the draft I believe that with the tr with the tutelage of Keith Martin and T Williams that we will have one of the most unstoppable offenses in the NFL coupled with the greatest run game ever and these additions only make Lamar Jackson that much more dangerous because you have to account for every player now, not just the run game. And Andrews, oof, my question is to you, why can't the so-called experts see how dangerous an offense of an offense Baltimore is building? And how are they giving or how, given Cleveland's past, can they even dream that they are the team to beat in the AFC North? Stay up, bro. Love the dedication. Appreciate it, man. Ooh. All right. So this was a lot. Now, first with the Cleveland Browns part. Um, I think Cleveland Browns, they, they do this every year. And I respect what they do because they, they go all in. They go all in. Um, but you, you got to look at what they've been doing, uh, especially when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, Cleveland Browns, they've been going all in. They've been having these stacked rosters, but Ravens still been finding a way. Ravens have still been finding a way uh, to take care of them. Um, but I think analysts and experts and whatnot they get so caught they get so caught up in all the moves that the browns have made which is some really good moves man. really good moves like they they are trying to fix that defense they really did uh all while still keeping the offense intact um but with uh with the first question why can't the so-called experts see how dangerous of an offense the baltimore ravens are building i think that's because the so-called experts uh, are too busy looking for different ways to down Lamar. And, and I don't say that even as a Ravens fan. It's true. Uh, anybody that really appreciates the game of football outside of fandom, uh, you like you talk to a lot of people. There's a lot of people on here that come through to, to the channel and stuff. They're not even Ravens fans. But they just uh, they know that Lamar, he's nice with it, man. He's nice. He's not a perfect quarterback at all by any means, but he's nice. 
he's nice and he's a he's real deal. Uh, NFL players, they continue to acknowledge it. Uh, his teammates continue to acknowledge it. So many people continue to acknowledge it. But uh, what the media continues to do is the same stuff. It's like they, they regurgitate a lot of these same takes and a lot of the same misinformation and whatnot. Oh, man, he's going to get hurt running the ball. He's going to get hurt running the ball. Oh, Lamar Jackson, he can't throw. Uh, he run, run, run. And, and one thing that I, I want y'all to look out for when you're watching like TV and when you're watching ESPN, the NFL, when you're watching whatever, watch the clips that they show when they talk about Lamar Jackson. Because that can sort of have like a um, sort of a subconscious effect on your thinking of Lamar Jackson because when they talk about Lamar Jackson and they add the clips in there too, they always show clips of him running. They always show that. So while they're talking and feeding you all this information like, oh, Lamar Jackson, oh, he's such a great runner, but he can't throw the ball. Oh, he's a really good runner, but he can't throw the ball. Oh, he can run, 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 but he can't throw. While they're feeding you that information, and you're hearing that uh, via your ears and whatnot. You're listening to it. You're hearing the, the audio of that. While you're, seeing, while you're hearing that audio, you're seeing a video of them showing Lamar Jackson make running plays. And we know he can make those running plays, but he can also make throwing plays too. Those are the clips that they don't show. Because they don't want you to think like, oh, man, this guy can't actually throw. So back to your question, Sean, about that the Ravens offense, it can be very dangerous. Even right now. Even right now. And again, I would still like it to be even more dangerous. I would like it if they got Julio. But, hey, maybe by the time you see this video, maybe they will. But maybe they won't. We'll see. Anyway, um, their offense can be very, very dangerous. right? Like, think, like no, no, none of these people, none of these experts ever talk about how the Ravens have the highest scoring offense the last two years. Ever since Lamar Jackson has been the starter, Ravens have the highest scoring offense the past two years. Lamar Jackson starts week one, Ravens have the highest scoring offense. And somebody in, in the comment section, they brought out such a great point about that, too. How Lamar miss, has missed so much time over, or not missed it, but he sat out a lot of fourth quarters. He sat out. He sat out week 17 uh, against the Steelers. He sat out so many fourth quarters in 2019. He missed the whole game uh, in uh, 2020 against the Steelers. He missed, uh, he, he missed fourth quarters this year, too. I think he missed fourth quarter against the Jaguars. He missed fourth quarter against the Giants or summer fourth quarter against the Giants. And there was some other too. But my point is that even with those that those that missed time, they still have been led the league in scoring ever since he's become the starting quarterback. So the offense is already dangerous. But with the additions, especially the ones that you named, they're that much more dangerous. But again, the media, they don't want you to think that. And you can see it for yourself. But they don't, they don't want that to be the narrative about Lamar Jackson. They want to continue to regurgitate the same thing that people have been saying ever since he hopped on board. Next question came from BB. He said, now that the Ravens have their roster, do you think it is wise to try and reconstruct Marcus Peters long term? He is almost a modern day Ed Reed. He deserves a long term contract and respect. From this organization he made an instant impact and is a dominant ball hawk thanks and hope all is well oh they certainly respect him i mean that's why they gave him the deal in the first place they gave him what a, a two three year extension uh at the end of his first season with the ravens like heading into the playoffs against the titans they gave him an, a contract extension like the the week before we playing the title oh yeah we had a bye week though so they gave him the contract extension uh, I think it was after week 16. I, yeah, because I think it was before week 17, I believe. But anyway, they gave him a contract extension in 2019. And that was the year that they traded for him. So they respect him. They definitely respect him. Um, now, will they keep him beyond or after this year? That's to be determined. I think that that is definitely to be determined. I believe they reconstructed his contract this year. So he's definitely here for this year. Um, but beyond that, that's when things could get a little bit shaky because there's more money to go around. There's other guys to be paid and Ravens, they could take a corner early next year, depending on what the cornerback situation, because obviously Marlon Humphrey's going to be here, but corner could get a little shaky because you still, Jimmy Smith's on a one-year contract. Tavon Young, 
he could we'll see what happens with him. We don't know. But they, they got Anthony Averett, and they love Anthony Averett. So he could end up stepping into a bigger role. Like, so they, they, they could have a plan in place. Um, so with Marcus Peters, I think it's just more of a wait and see kind of thing. And the last question on this episode of NFL question from subscribers also came from BB. He said, what's up, fam? Hope everything is good with you and the family. Appreciate it. Uh, just thinking on something. What if the Ravens moved the Dafe away to running back? No, no, and no. Uh, he said, I know it sounds crazy, but he ran an official 4-3-6 in the 40, and him being as big as he is it would be unstoppable. The Ravens would have their own version of a faster and potentially better Derrick Henry. Just saying. Keep up the great work, homie. Um, yeah, no, uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. No, because, no, he's he's a defensive player for a reason. Um... And I no, no. Why why won't you have all that speed and that size on defense? Where you need some more speed. You they need some more speed on defense. They trying to get to them quarterbacks, especially when them quarterbacks start scrambling out of the pocket and whatnot, start rolling out and all that. Leave, leave them for defense. We don't need to make any positional changes with Adafi away.